amazing technology, uh, how we anti-segment surgeons can use it. Maipal, please. Uh, thank you very much, Abhay, and uh, pleasure being here. Let me talk about uh, anterior segment OCT. I would say that is uh, come of age and uh, it helps us navigate um, uh, through stormy waters. Uh, as you all know that the OCT is a non-contact, non-invasive diagnostic technique, uh, which permits uh, us to give high resolution cross-sectional images of the biological tissue. And this is like you're getting obviously an in vivo image and therefore it helps. Uh, OCT uses a near infrared low coherence light uh, and can give you uh, resolutions that can vary upon the time <clears throat> of the uh, a machine that you are using, whether it's a high definition or not. Now, when you look at the normal cornea, what you can get on an OCT, uh, OCT actually came in uh, more as an application for posterior segment, but I think more and more of anterior segment surgeons are using this now. So you can look at the tear film, you can see the epithelium, the epithelial thickness, Bauman's, the stroma, and obviously the decimates and the endothelium. Now, when you are looking at uh, the OCT, uh, you can, in refractive surgery and cataract surgery, these are the two things and glaucoma also, but I won't be talking about glaucoma or uh, iris, but uh, it helps you uh, get a clue as to the pathology and the changes that are happening. So the best thing as regards the refractive is that it helps you assess the corneal thickness. So a lot of people don't have a, 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 a topographer system that gives them the corneal thickness. Uh, so they do use an OCT to get the corneal thickness and also to see if there are opacities. It helps you evaluate pre-surgical and post-surgical uh, anterior segment anatomy. Uh, it will help you for laser-assisted cataract and refractive surgery. I'll be just showing you images and can help you in intracorneal ring segments, phakic IULs, position of IUL post-operatively, malignant glaucoma, etc. There are a lot of things. Now, when you're looking at uh, keratoconus, as you all know, that the pachymetry map uh, central five millimeter. The uh, there is if there is a difference of uh, more than forty five micron thickness less than four seventy, and minimum max difference of hundred microns. That can uh, suggest that there is keratoconus, and you can see here that the location as to the location being uh, uh, the uh, inferior quadrant. Then you are looking at the minimum, and you are looking at the difference between the superior nasal and the inferior temple. Temporal. So in the OCT only, you can even if you don't have a topographer, kindly look at it. Uh, you are also seeing that there is the inferior thinning which could correspond to the thinnest cornea and if you look at the thickness of the epithelium, this is a lot of emphasis is being uh, paid now on the thickness of the epithelium because that compensates for the stromal surface irregularities. And again, this can give you an indicator on the keratoconus. Uh, let us look at this case again of a keratoconus of an acute high drops. Uh, you can also look at the post demarcation line of C3R, as you can uh, rightly see whether there is a demarcation. This is intracorneal ring segments. Earlier, when we were looking at enhancement in LASIK flaps, you had to look at the residual bed thickness, which was there. So what we used to do in the maybe about a decade or more uh, earlier is to lift the flap and then do the pachymetry uh, and see what is the residual bed and then decide as to how much ablation you can do. But when you have an OCT, you can make a preoperative look at whether you would have enough stromal tissue for um, uh, doing the uh, residual power correction or not. In this particular case, you can see preoperatively there was a scar, which you can see at this particular, the OCT is showing you the depth and you can see uh, that it is paracentral. This is the scar that you have. And this is post-operatively, you could see that we were able to avoid the scar and this is the flap that we went ahead and did it. Now, when you are looking at uh, keratoplasty, you can uh, uh, see whether uh, earlier we would do for uh, keratoplasty for cases where there was a full thickness uh, corneal scar or even laminar scars, we could peel. But when you are looking at uh, PTK, which has become uh, really a good uh, uh, outcome surgery, with a, which is not needing a tissue, we can do this. So you can see this is a corneal scar in one of our patients, uh, which you can see is that this is in the superficial part. And uh, we could actually go ahead and uh, do a PTK in this particular case. Now, let us look at the uh, OCT to monitor the DSEC graph. So you can see here that this is the DSEC graph. It is showing you good uh, outcomes. Uh, let's go from DSEC to Desmet's detachment um, patient operated for cataract. 
you can see that there is a persistent corneal edema and uh, the patient was elsewhere uh, operated. The doctor was uh, just told that there is nothing that can be done. But had he got an OCT done and he would have picked up this uh, Despert's membrane detachment, which was there. And one can, I'll just show you a video of intraop. Um, uh, the setting of this Despert's membrane back. This is to calculate the vault size. You can see the vault size in an ICL on the OCT. Uh, for an ICL explantation in a cataract surgery, again, uh, you can get a good image of the OCT. You can see this is the uh, lens uh, as it is, and then you can uh, have the uh, cataract. You can align it very well and uh, go ahead and do the laser procedure in this particular case and you can see that this is a good laser procedure and we got a good outcome in this case now this is the integrated uh, oct where uh, tityal and uh, namrata have done a lot of work and their group you can see this is the same patient where you had a despots detachment and how we can use this to actually see intraoperatively whether the despot detachment is settling or not this is the intraop oct as you can see a huge uh, detachment uh, we are sitting temporarily we are going uh, from the inferior part this is the area of uh, uh, view and you can see as the air bubble is coming in uh, you can see that the despots detachment is getting attached. So you can see intraoperatively, you can see fantastically that the despots detachment is getting attached and you can wait and you can see that the outcome in this particular case would obviously be fantastic. You can see one day post-op and the patient recovered good vision. Now, this is the lenticule plane dissection, which you can see on the intraop OCT. Uh, you can see in this particular case, we are entering and as we see uh, uh, in this uh, particular case, as we are doing on the lenticule, uh, let's go in and uh, you will see that this is going into the posterior plane. So you can see that this is the posterior plane where we have gone it. Can you see it? Uh, this is the lenticule. We have not gone into the anterior plane. So the wrong uh, plane dissection can easily be made out on the OCT. Then we have to go ahead and take out the, uh, uh, go into the anterior part of the lenticule. And again, you can see here, this is the anterior part of the lenticule. So you can get a good image. Uh, you can also check on the integrity of the posterior capsule uh, in case of a, a patient where there is a suspect posterior polar. So you can see it is integrated. Uh, this is uh, my uh, favorite uh, place where I use flax, which is the posterior polar cataract. You can see there is a huge pre-existing rent, which the intraop OCT is showing, but there is no vitreous disturbance. This is the intraop OCT. We have done a flax here and you can see that the nucleus is taken out very well. Uh, there is no, the epinucleus is still protecting uh, the vitreous and the vitreous is not coming out. And you can see after the removal of the, uh, of the uh, epinucleus, you can see that there is a big uh, rent that is there, uh, which was there right from the beginning and you can see a vitreous coming out. So this is something which gives you a fantastic outcome and you can put an intraocular lens. This is the photo essay of the same patient, uh, pre-op uh, slit lamp. Uh, you can see the IUL master again. You can see that there is a defect. This is the spectral domain ASOCT and the femtolaser. This is the defect after we have done the surgery and this is the vitreous that is coming up. So this is uh, has been reported by us in JSCRS uh, that the integrated OCT actually increases uh, and it helps detect and increase the safety in the pre-existing posterior capsular dehiscence that we have and flax is the procedure of choice in these cases. So to sum up, all that I wish to say is, and uh, just recently I had a demo of the interior I don't have any uh, specific, uh, uh, commercial interest, but I think that's one of the most fantastic interior segment OCTs that I have seen. Um, uh, let's hope when we buy it, but uh, the AS OCT can and has become a reliable weapon in an interior segment surgeon's armamentarium. It can help diagnose, treat, and modify refractive and cataract surgical procedures and the microscope integrated mm -hmm. Very expensive ASOCT is a newer addition to the premium cataract and refractive surgery. And that is what I'm saying that the advent of OCT makes us, gives us a peek into the ocular structures which are invisible to the current technology of microsurgery. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Maipal, for giving overall uh, 